and I even appeared on amateur shows. I remember one time I, uh, I was about 12 or 13, I remember I won a local contest at a theater uh, doing a, a Nick Lucas imitation. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people don't remember Nick Lucas, but Nick Lucas was, back in the 30s, he uh, was a, 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 big, uh, a big movie star. He, he recorded a song called Tiptoe Through the Tulips way before, uh, what's, what's his name, recorded a Tiny Tim on the ukulele. Nick Lucas was called uh, the singing troubadour or whatever it was, but he was a guitarist who sang, had a beautiful voice, and I, I did an imitation of him singing and playing the guitar. And the first prize was a week's engagement at the Branford Theater in Newark for the staggering sum of $125 I got. I had to get out of school, I had to get permission, but I appeared there uh, as, as the winner of this contest. That was, that was the first prize. That's a lot that of money my first, for that. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that. And uh, like I say, that was my first experience. And then going around all these different shows, I, went, I, I somehow got to WAAT and, and, and there they was they were the, the children's show there. Every Sunday morning, they had a radio show for an hour, nine to 10, uh, Sally and Sam's Children Hour. And uh, I was on that show and uh, as, as a player and as an entertainer with all the uh, bunch of other kids. Actually what it was, it was, a, it was a, a, a dance and music school. And as part of the school, they had uh, uh, this group of children who were regulars who appeared on the show every Sunday, every Sunday morning. And in fact, one of those who appeared on it was my wife, my future wife-to-be. I've known well, she was eight years old when I was uh, 14. And then when I was on the show, I formed a little group for them with a friend of mine who played violin, Johnny Calibro, and a friend of mine who played bass, Jimmy Wager. We were, we were a trio on the show. And then we used to accompany the kids along with a pianist who was a regular pianist on the show. And we were part of that show every Sunday morning. Did you have a name for the then trio? At, yeah, we were called the Blue Blazers. Then after a while, the, uh, about a year later, like I said, I was about 14, they gave us our own show, uh, for our own 15-minute show. I think the Kitty show was on like 9 to 10, and then I think we went on like 10.45 to 11. 15-minute radio show with the Blue Blazers with Mitzi, my wife. She's a girl vocalist. That's where I first met Sinatra. Sinatra was another one of those that was hanging around WAT in those days. He wasn't on the children's show, but he eventually got uh, his own show on WAT. They had a local house band there, a five-piece orchestra, and he got his own show. We know we didn't get paid for it. We got paid car fare money. You know, nobody got paid anything. But uh, that's when I first met Frank. I was 14, he was 17, and then we, I used to do some club dates with him and things like that. But my whole career evolved around knowing Frank then, and then later in life, and then later in life, that's how I've wound up my career. The last, uh, the last six years of my professional career were spent traveling with him. Uh, do you remember the first time you heard Frank Sinatra sing? Yeah, at WAAT. Yeah, did, did, you, did you recognize talent right away? Well, I don't know. Did I, I didn't have anybody recognize my talent, or did I recognize? I have no idea. He was a singer, you know, I mean, like, a, uh, to, say, to say that I think he would, uh, he would become the phenomenon he would, who knows, you know? But uh, he was very musical, very uh, knowledgeable in music, knew what he wanted, even at that age, you know? But uh, we did club dates together, and uh, one thing I remember about Frank, though, even in those days, he had he had his he had his own little entourage, even at that stage in life. Really, we've got a couple of guys who used to be with him all the time, you know, hang around with him. Yeah.